So we are teachers, not IT technicians, but when teaching online, we're of course gonna run into little issues from time to time. Luckily, LearnCube has some useful tools to help you diagnose and get around any little tech problems that may come. If your student has a connection issue, such as a problem with their video or audio that you can't see or hear them, the first step is for you and your student to click on this little refresh button. You can see it here beside the mic and camera buttons. Don't just refresh the browser at the very top here. Um, you want to do it inside the classroom. You won't need to exit and re-enter the class and refreshing the browser isn't necessarily going to fix the problem because it will reload the page with the exact same settings. If any of you remember those big old-fashioned TVs, you know, when they were acting up, we used to bang them on the top and that would fix everything. That's pretty much what we're doing here and should solve most little connection issues. If that hasn't helped, then the problem may be related to your hardware, your mic or camera. In that case, you'll want to redo the equipment checks you did at the start of the class. You can do this by clicking on the settings button side here and then scroll down and click on this little button here. This will bring you back to the pre-class checks where you can catch any problems with your mic, camera or browser. When you re-enter the classroom, your connection to the video server is also refreshed. Now, how do we explain this to a student who might not be able to hear us or who, you know, maybe it's not their first language? To avoid frustration, I'll usually draw an arrow over here and write, can you please click on the settings button? Uh, remember that the student only has one button on the right hand side. So don't say, you know, click on the second button down. Or they could get confused. So there's just one button for the student. Then you can write, please click on redo equipment check. And when your student clicks on this button, they'll exit the classroom. And then you should do it as well, just in case the issue is on your side. If the issue is with your whiteboard and the lesson materials appearing there, instead of your video and audio connection, you, know, you can use this, this little uh, refresh button on the top left of the whiteboard panel. And your student should click it as well. And this will refresh the whiteboard view and everything will be back in sync. Now, these checks should solve the most common issues that come up in class. But if you're still experiencing problems, what should you do? Well, my personal rule of thumb is to spend no more than five minutes trying to solve the problem. If it's taking too long, I'll try and work around it. Um, in the case of a connection issue, for example, you could switch to an external video server. I'll link uh, below to an article on that feature in the video description. Uh, and I, the idea here would be to teach the class uh, however you can, and then afterwards, you or your school coordinator can reach out to the student and actually fix the problem. After any class we experience a technical issue, I do also recommend getting in touch with our support team. Individual teachers can contact support at learncube.com directly, or if you're teaching with a school, your coordinator will be able to contact our premium support team for a priority response. When reaching out to us on any res support request, be sure to include the class link or the class review link, you can find your past classes, uh, a brief description of exactly what happened, and if applicable, the usernames of students or teachers involved. This will enable us to look into the case uh, and get back to you much more quickly. So in those five minutes, what are some quick things that I can check to help me get around any little problems? The first is obviously your internet connection. Make sure that your Wi-Fi signal is good and strong as well as your students. Um, if you want to quickly see what your internet speed is like, I can recommend speedtest.net. You can send this link to your students, just type it into the chat panel and they'll be able to click on it from there. Remember, we're not just looking for speed, but stability. So look out for an internet connection that's fast, but it seems to jump up and down a lot, as this can cause issues too. If the internet speed is a little slow, consider muting your camera or using whiteboard only mode. Removing the video will use less bandwidth and so better for a weak connection. Another problem could be your device. I always recommend that teachers use a desktop or a laptop, uh, but if your student is using a phone or tablet to connect to a class, then see if they can switch to a computer. It's of course possible to take classes on a mobile device, but troubleshooting tech problems can just be a little harder. If your student is using an iPad or iPhone, please note that they should always use Safari, not another browser like Chrome or Edge. If you are using an older computer, you may find that it runs a little more slowly with you know, lots of things open at once. Try closing some tabs or applications that you don't need running in the background or suggesting that your student does the same if, if the problem's on their side. What about sound issues? If you hear an echo whenever someone speaks, it's likely that one or more users are not using headphones. In some cases, the computer's mic will pick up the sound from the speakers and then you get this awful feedback loop. Uh, students and teachers should always use headphones, but if it's not possible, then muting the user causing the issue will work. Um, they can 
unmute themselves whenever they want to speak. How do you know which user is causing the problem? Well, uh, on the video panel here, uh, I have this little green dot, which you can see goes green whenever I speak like this. This is actually counting the talk time for each user in the class. Uh, but what it's really measuring is when my microphone is active. So you can use this little dot to see where the noise is coming from and also to see whether a hardware issue is with you know, the student's microphone or with your headphones. What if the micro camera won't work at all? Well, this could be related to your browser's permission settings. On Chrome, you can adjust these settings using the toolbar here. Um, and on other browsers, it will be in a similar place. So it's a browser setting to change any permissions related to camera, mic, or also screen sharing. If the issue seems to be with your LearnCube account, then you may be suffering from a problem with your cache. This essentially means that temporary settings are being saved to your browser. Clearing your cache will remove these settings and can often resolve simple account issues and issues with images not appearing on the whiteboard. I hope you found these tips and tricks helpful. Uh, hopefully you won't need them too often. Of course, uh, we have a lot of information and articles and videos in our knowledge base to help you with other problems the internet might throw your way. Uh, so be sure to check out support.learncube.com. And of course, you can always reach out to our support team. That's all from me for now. Goodbye and happy teaching.